Hey everybody, welcome back to Mighty Morphin Conspiracy Theories. I'm Casey, I'm a huge Power Ranger nerd, and I'm having so much fun doing these videos and doing this deep dive into Dino Fury because it's honestly an outstanding season. I have been so blown away at the amount of care they've taken with this with this season, and I'm excited to see what they do with it come this spring. So, let's jump right in. Chris Graham is a new director to Power Rangers. He doesn't have a large amount of directing credits, but he has one notable comedy called Samoan Wedding, which brought Chris to directing actor Pau Magasiva, who plays Shane in Ninja Storm, Tawila Bakley, who plays Commander Shaw, Nathaniel Less, who played Master Mao in Jungle Fury, David Van Horn, who played Dave in Beast Morphers, and the Power Ranger legend Kelson Henderson, who played Mick, Boom, and so many others. Chris also did a horror film called The Ferryman, which featured Robbie Magasiva, who was Powell's brother in real life and Shane's brother in Ninja Storm. Sally Stockwell, who voiced Serpentina on Mystic Force. He was a collaborating director for the dance-focused movie Born to Dance that features Doggy Kruger and Solaris Knight actor John Tui and Nathan Cara, who played a trainer in Dino Charge. For the first season of Dino Fury, Chris has directed seven episodes, which is pretty good to jump into the show with only seven out of 22 episodes. It opens up with a really great cinematic shot of the sky and trees as it comes down to see the T-Rex statue at Dino Hinge and Zato sitting looking at his pendant. I keep crediting this show with how professional and mature it is. It's so much better than stock photos or stock videos of a juice bar or a school. It's really so much more professional and they are taking it a lot more seriously and you can tell. We see a flashback to Zato's home planet, Arafcon. You can see mostly desert terrain, but a section of lush green grass where a great city is off in the distance. The city is covered in large skyscrapers. There are several buildings with large flat tops on them that look as though shuttles or some sort of flying craft could land on them. So far, I don't think we've gotten a name for this city, but it looks extremely advanced. And remember, this was over 65 million years ago. It doesn't really fit the knights, though. If the city is so advanced and looks so futuristic, why are they still fighting with swords and metal armor? unless they are such a peaceful society they never took time to advance weaponry. We can see in the distance there appears to be some sort of creatures flying. Now they seem to be very far in the distance, but their wingspans are huge. I wonder if Rafcon has some sort of prehistoric bird creature that lives there like a pterodactyl. Through the cloudy sky, it appears that Rafcon has three suns that give light to it. With how far apart these are in the sky, Rafcon might experience extremely long days. It might only experience a few hours of darkness every night, which would give this planet a very different dynamic. I wonder if Zato and Ion will ever comment on that. Now, we meet Zato's mother, who is played by actress Jen Van Epps. She's a New Zealand actress. She has been busy in 2021 ever since Power Rangers. She played Brenda in Netflix's Cowboy Bebop. She has been in several TV movies that starred fellow Power Ranger actors. Destination Love, which stars Lily from Jungle Fury, Anna Hutchinson, Josh McKenzie, who played Jordan in Megaforce, Tim Carlson, who played Dr. Walsh in Beast Morphers, Jim McLarty, who voiced Broodwing in SPD. One cast member that is not in Power Rangers, but thought would be worth mentioning is Michelle Ang, who voiced Omega in Bad Batch. She was also in a movie that starred a Power Ranger called Together Forever T, that starred Kimberly Crossman, who played Lauren in Power Rangers Samurai. Other stars of the movie were Jordy Weber from Power Rangers Ninja Steel, Molly Leesman, who played Devin's gaming nemesis Carrie Dixon, Emmett Skelton who voiced Jax in Beast Morphers, Jackie Drew voiced Madame Odious in Ninja Steel. This movie is actually available on Roku and on Roku's website you can watch it for free. Jen Van Epps is a mother and calls herself a home chef. She is represented by Gail Conway Management in New Zealand. Now if you watched the last video I talked about an agency that seems to be really connected to Power Rangers. They were a small agency with 51 actors and actresses. Gail Conway has 343 actors not to mention people who do voice work. So it's a huge agency, and there is no way I have time to go through all of that. But from the quick skimming I did, it looks like they have a lot of people who are tied to Cowboy Bebop. They do have some actors and actresses who are on Power Rangers, but they're typically from older seasons. Sally Martin, who played Tori in Ninja Storm, Latham Gaines, who played Anton Mercer in Dino Thunder, Antonia Preble, who played Claire in Mystic Force, 
Nick Sampson, who played Chip in Mystic Force, Rhea Vendervis from Overdrive. There's a handful of some actresses that have been in more recent seasons, but typically they're pretty small roles. Doing the research on this company was actually kind of difficult because a lot of their information was wrong. For instance, Lily Powell had listed 2017 Lori on Power Rangers Dino Thunder. She was actually on Ninja Steel, and Ninja Steel aired in 2018. Come on, Gail. With 343 actors and actresses on your roster, it doesn't look very good to have half information on your website. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, I would hope that you subscribe, join the foil helmets. We're here. We like to make crazy ideas, crazy assumptions about Power Rangers and see what we connect. So back to Zato's mother telling him the line, never give up. This is a call back to Wild Force. This is the saying that Danny and Max repeated to each other over and over. We come out of the flashback and Amelia has a pretty serious conversation with Zato about Rafcon and Zato expresses that he just wants to know what happened to it, saying how the planet was in ruin when he left. Amelia tells him that Solon found some sort of message. They go and Solon tells Zato it's from the same quadrant as Rafcon. Now, how big is a quadrant when you are talking about this stuff? Does that just mean a general fourth of the area away from the Earth? When they try to play the message, the modulator gets burnt out, and since it's from Rafcon, they don't have any way to repair it. Amelia suggests they go to a psychic, and Ollie says it's a bad idea. Ultimately, Ollie is right in this situation, but it again is just pointing out the difference in Ollie and Amelia. Ollie suggests going to the conservatory to see what the scientists picked up. Zato decides to try both methods to figure out the message. So they go to Madame Indigo, who is reading the future of Jane while Jay Borg is filming. This is for a Buzz Blast article, which is a really smart excuse for this comedy duo. A lot of times you get some pretty wacky and ridiculous storylines for comic relief characters that come out of left field. You know, I really love these characters because Jane and Jay Borg aren't just these characters with a crazy voice who tries to do weird things like a Victor or Monty. She does have a purpose with everything she she does. She loves experiencing things and she always throws herself into it 110%. And that's probably why she's perfect for running a pop culture based website like Buzz Blast. And I think even the comical characters are even a good example for kids to really go for it in life. And a lot of times the comic relief characters really aren't anything that kids should look up to, which it doesn't have to be that way. They can be funny and be good people at the same time. Traditionally, these characters are a thorn in the side of the Rangers always bullying them or trying to uncover their identities, so I like this angle a lot. I also like how Jay Borg is skeptical of this and doesn't seem to believe it at all. So once they leave on their adventure, the three rangers sit down with Madame Indigo, played by actress Darian Takel. She first started her career as a regular on a show called Possession in 1985. She's done some TV movies here and there. One movie that I saw she was on was Heavenly Creatures, which I only know because my wife is a giant Kate Winslet fan, and that is Kate Winslet's very first movie she was ever in. She was on a few episodes of Xena and then small parts every few years on various shows. Maybe Power Rangers will use her for random characters in the future. Madame Indigo's tent has mostly red pieces of fabric all over it, but behind her is an orangish brown strip and a purple strip. I wonder if this message actually has something to do with Void Knight and that's what this is foreshadowing or something to do with the brown version of Void Knight. Maybe this message gives some sort of indication of who he is. She uses Zato's pendant to tell him the future. This gives him false hope, but Ollie quickly shows how Madame Indigo is a fraud by telling her that him and Amelia are in love. Of course, Madame Indigo says they will have a happy life together. Now this does raise a question. There are some Amali shippers out there who think they'll end up together. So if they do end up together, was that message from Rafcon after all? And was Madame Indigo not a fraud? But my theory is that this signal was something to do with the star Nexus. The outside of the tent also has purple and red strips up the roof. There's a symbol on her sign that I can't quite make out, but I wish I could get a clearer shot of it. We cut to Jane and Jay Borg trying to sense a Sporex. Jay Borg steps in fast setting cement and the construction worker tells her she's going to be sorry. The road worker is played by Zach Douglas, and this is his only role on IMDb. He has been in a lot of short films from Lab Productions and South Seas Films. The concrete solidifies immediately, and right after that, she sees a Sporex. So, does Jane really have psychic powers? She was trying to find one and ended up leading them to a Sporex. I think Jane has magical powers for real. And if she does, does that mean she's tapping into the morphing grid? Magic can be accessed through the morphing grid, and I talk about that evidence in my Alpha's Christmas video if you haven't seen it. It, check it out. 
Vipira appears and Jaybor calls the ranger hotline. And this is the first time we actually see it being used. Vipira is being voiced by returning voice actress Rachel Duncan. She voiced Tyeratron in Beast Morphers. Vipira's eyes on her chest can stop organic beings from moving. Ollie and Amelia figure this out and have to keep themselves from looking at her. They turn around to do their morph. This is honestly one of the coolest morphs I think I've ever seen on Power Rangers. The way they cut back and forth between the two of them is really cool. This in general is a pretty long morphing sequence, but it does give them a lot of time to do a lot of really cool camera angles and movement. Now, the two of them can't fight her off completely, but Mucus comes and grabs a camcorder and then takes Vipira with her. Amelia points out that the hotline works since this is the first time they've gotten a call from the hotline. So then they go to the observatory where they call it an energy blast. Now, if this is something to do with the Nexus Prism, that would make sense that it's some sort of energy blast and not specifically a message. The astronomer is played by Mayan Meta. This is his first time on Power Rangers. He's represented by Kathy Rawlings and Associates, who also carries Mark Wright and Sia Trokenheim from Beast Morphers, as well as Kira Josephson. Amelia gets a message from Stan over at BuzzBlast that the broadcasting is down. I talked about BuzzBlast employees Stan and Annie in the last video. I'm not sure why they ask Amelia to come to solve this problem, maybe because they know she's with Ollie and he's good at this stuff. They should make Ollie into an IT guy at BuzzBlast eventually. It would make sense. The broadcast has been taken over by Vipira. She uses it to freeze everyone in the city. Zato gets caught at the base, but Solon is not affected because of her cyborg eyes. We haven't gotten a lot of information on Solon at this point, where she is from or how she became a cyborg. It would be interesting if someone from Edenoi had aided the Rafcon Knights and helped create Solon. It would be a really cool storyline to dive into, bringing up some connections to another planet or something. She notices Zato's pendant and says she can use it to help find the message. But while Solon does that, Zato uses the sonic dino key to basically hear at an extreme level to fight Vipira. There are so many booster keys and they use them at very practical times, which is different from a lot of other ranger seasons. Now it's also noted that this key is used without being morphed. No armor is added to it. Zato destroys the computer that is going on a loop. Ali and Amelia are freed and they assist Zato. Vipira grows and the rangers call on the T-Rex champion zord while Solon gets the triceratops and ankylosaurus ready. Solon Solon gets the Zords out and we see them for the first time. I really like the Triceratops because its main horn is a sword blade, which I think is a great idea for a design. Now this is honestly a really great battle. Power Rangers is kind of famous for the same old fight scene, but this uses different things. The Zords actually try to hide behind a building when Viperia is going after them. This didn't end well for the building, but it's a great show of guerrilla warfare. This is a tactic that is used by smaller militias against bigger armies. The main idea is run up, get some good hits in, and retreat before you can get hurt. It's awesome they are using real battle tactics. Then they cut up the road using the Triceratops horn, or blade. The Ankylosaurus crushes it into pieces and Amelia uses the hover dino key to levitate them and send them at Vipira. Ollie then uses the fix it quick booster key and it returns the road to a full piece and it's attached to Vipira so her eyes are covered up. That is a very well thought out and executed attack even though it does cause damage to the city but I'm sure they can fix the road if they have the power to do what they just did. I talked in the last video about how strong these booster keys are. This is a great example in the right environment they could use these type of keys to stop a grown monster. I would actually love to see them do that in the second season. It would have been cool to see them do this in the first five episodes or so before ever getting Zords. I think that would have made getting the Zords more epic and shown how powerful these rangers really are. So then they combine the Zords. Ollie says, wow, we're in a Megazord. And Amelia says, Ollie, we need to get a selfie in this thing. So maybe there is a little something between them. Who knows? I don't know why she wanted a selfie specifically with Ollie, but you know, we're just speculating. They defeat Vipira and the Sporks flies down and Void Knight instantly teleports to retrieve it. But the Rangers teleport in time to get it. Again, Void Knight sounds happy to actually have a powered up Sporks. He doesn't act disappointed like he's mad the Rangers won. After the fight, Zato says that there was a moment he was thinking about giving up, but he had to find a way. Solon finally plays the message and we hear some sort of mumbling alien language. This actually reminded me instantly of Captain Chaku in Beast Morphers before he had his translator. Maybe it's a message from another intergalactic police force. It's confusing because they kind of said it's not a message, but now it is. I'm, I'm not really sure. 
You know, I find this episode very interesting, not just from what you see, but actually what you don't see. We have no scene with Void Knight at Area 62 plotting against the Rangers like most villains would be doing. Traditionally, there's always a villain making up a plan to destroy the Rangers, and then it plays out. But we are seeing Void Knight stay in the background, which is doing two things. It makes him more mysterious and adds to the anticipation of who he is and what he'll do. It also gives us more time to focus on the Rangers and their world. We're already experiencing a lot at buzz blast and the things that the rangers are doing together if you guys like this breakdown please subscribe join the foil helmets i'm really excited to be continuing this series because the next episode honestly i think is one of the best episodes like in power ranger history it's outstanding so i can't wait to bring that one to you but thank you so much for watching guys i hope everybody's doing well and have a good one thanks bye